Welcome to this online demonstration of Shadelight for SketchUp. During these examples, I'm going to show you how using the interactive tools of Shadelight for SketchUp, it's easy to create realistic renders of your SketchUp models. The model that I have here, I've downloaded from 3D Warehouse. I've made some changes to the geometry in the garden to make it look a little more realistic and also some changes to the roof but I haven't made any changes to it regarding setting it up for shade light. This is exactly as it would be in SketchUp. So I'm going to render this in shade light and we can see the shade light toolbar here is made up of four simple buttons and we're going to look at these buttons as we go through these examples. So I'm just going to click on the camera icon here and we're going to start shade light rendering. We can see the shade light render window appear there and after a second or two we can see our render starting to render interactively and progressively. Now I've mentioned the interactive updates and if I spin our model around here we can see our render update interactively. So if I zoom in down to the bottom here this follows uh, pretty much straight away on the shade light render window. Now this also follows if we were modeling geometry and also if we're making changes to lights. And we're gonna be doing this as we go throughout our demonstration. Now, I just want to have a quick look in the shade light render settings here. And we can see that I'm rendering this at 1280 by 720. Now the preview window that we have here certainly isn't 1280 by 720, but what we can do, we have zoom and pan functionality. So I can zoom into 100% on our render here. And then by holding down the left mouse button, I can pan around the model to have a look at this as it would be at 100%. Now this is instead of just uh, choosing the full screen there, which I can do as well, but this just makes it easier if you're using one screen to have your sketch up and shade light on the same screen. Now we can see that in our render, the materials that have come straight from SketchUp, we've recreated these materials and added extra functionality in shade light to give them realistic finishes. So a good example of this is the water. We can see that we've added a ripple bump map effect on top here. And this gives it a realistic finish. And what we've also done is we've given it a true index of refraction. Now I'm not gonna get into the science of rendering too much as this is not the idea of shade light. The idea of shade light is we give you the tools and we've set all this up for you. So where I say index of refraction on the water, this means the way the light bounces through the water as we look down. We've just done this for you. And if I pan over here to the window, we can see that the glass in the windows is set up to be reflective. And also we can see on our bricks here, we've got a very slight bump map on here as well. And uh, this would show up more if there was lighting, but uh, we're gonna have a look at changing this later. Now with regards to changing the materials, and uh, we'll have a look at that uh, while we're in here, it's very quick and simple, and simply following the SketchUp technique to change the materials. You don't really need to do anything in shade light. So I'm going to open the uh, material editor in here, and uh, just going to select these tiles. Now we can see that uh, we've, we've got these particular tiles here. Now, if I want to choose a different material, so I'm just going to choose a, a wood effect here. And I'm just going to uh, select a light wood finish um, just to sort of look like for decking around our pool area. And I'm going to put this wood material down. And we can see that shade light simply updates automatically on this. So what I can do is I'm going to open the shade light material editor here. And we're gonna have a look at how this is currently set up. So we're gonna have our material ball that's gonna render in a second there so we can see a preview of how our material looks on um, the sphere. But we've given it an automatic type of finish, a uh, type of material, sorry. And then we can also control the finish. So at the moment we can see that uh, if I just move around here, the wood effect on here, when we just let this render a little more, we can start to see has got a very subtle reflection of um, the brickwork here on the floor. Now, if I did want to change this, we have a selection of types of materials. So uh, I, I want to give this a slightly more shiny finish so I can give this very, very highly polished. So, so once it renders, we can see that we've got a pretty highly polished wood outside uh, 
outside here on our decking and um, the walls are reflecting quite strongly on that. Or we can choose just a, a very dull finish. Now this is going to be sort of even more dull than the auto finish and that's the uh, the decking effect that I want for outside. So we can see it's very quick and simple just to fine tune those materials because we've done a lot of work straight out of the box when you apply these in SketchUp. So if we zoom back out here, we can now see that we have our, our wooden decking all over our scene. And uh, we we'll just look at this scene so we can see the whole thing at uh, 50%. So if I go back into our shade light settings menu here. Now, also worth mentioning is that I'm rendering um, towards the higher end of our quality slider here. And um, this is set to um, sort of a high quality level and it does a lot of um, rendering techniques behind the scenes to set this up. There are higher levels I can render to and um, the highest level, uh, level 10 here, is an extremely high quality render. Now, I would really only save this if your render is going to print or you're doing a very high resolution render. It does have an effect on the render times, it will slow things down, but it does create very high quality. There's a lot of behind the scenes things going on there that give you a very high quality render. The scene option here, exterior, we're going to have a look at later. And also the um, auto update, we'll talk about that one later as well. I just want to talk about the lighting option that we have at the moment. At the moment, we're lighting our scene in shade light, just simply using the SketchUp sunlight. So if I just move that down, I can open my um, SketchUp shadow menu here. If I pull this over here so it's clear. We're simply using the shadow settings direct from SketchUp in this particular setting. So where the shadows fall in our SketchUp window are where our shadows are falling in our shade light window. Now these, we can see these are hard edge shadows. And uh, if we do change the time of day here, we can see our, our shadows have now moved around the different side here. So we see the shadow of the tree by the window. But when you're changing the time of day, this is changing the shadow positions. But as you as you've seen, it doesn't really change the feel of the day. So what we have in Shade Light for SketchUp Pro, we have a physical sky system. Now what we've done is we've created a physical sky in Shade Light and this is controlled by the SketchUp shadow settings. So there's no tools there that you, you need to learn. But the changes that I make in here not only control the shadow positions, just as they did anyway in um, using the SketchUp shadows. But if I choose a later time of day here, we can also see the color is also changing as well. And this is where the sky that we've created, the sky actually changes color to suit the time of day. Now this can be seen if I come down to the bottom here, our background, we're currently just rendering the SketchUp background so we can see that our render matches the SketchUp background there. But I'm gonna choose lighting environment now my background is now my physical sky system. So if I look round here, we can actually see round the sky and uh, that's where our sun is, so the, sun, the sky is a little brighter there. And if we have a look round and spin round, we can see the color of the sky looks realistic and as it would at this sunset time that I've selected. Or if I choose a brighter time of the day and uh, we get a nice sort of dark blue sky there, and um, this just looks, gives it that realistic feel. So that's a, a different option we could have for lighting. It just gives us that little bit more power. Other options we have for lighting are artificial lights. And we're going to look at artificial lights later on in another example. But there's these four presets here. Now these are HDR images. Now I'm not going to go into the science um, again of rendering, as I said earlier. But a HDR image, it stands for high dynamic range. It's worth understanding what it actually is. It's a 360 degree spherical photograph. Now, if I put on golf course evening here, now I'm just uh, closing the settings down. Now, as I spin around the model, we can see that our scene is now inside of this 360 degree photograph. And it, we're looking around this photograph as we would be looking around um, the real life when this photograph was taken. 
Now, what's very clever about the HDR images is they actually contain lighting information as well. So where this particular image was taken, it was a slightly overcast day. Um, so there's a hazy sun. Now, I can rotate this image round. So if I just go to around 45 degrees, we can see now we get our soft shadows of the sun here, just coming from the sides of the building. And this matches that HDR, so we're getting the realistic lighting. Now what we're also getting in this particular scene is we're going to get realistic reflections on the windows as well. Now what I'm going to do, instead of having this lighting environment, the 360 degree sphere as my background, I'm going to choose a custom background. And I'm just going to browse to this image here. Now you can see this pretty much matches, it looks like a, a golf course image here. And we've put this image in the back and using the interactivity, I can now just move my model around a bit and get this in the right position to match that background photograph. So I'm happy with the position there. I can see the lake around the back there. Now, one thing I'm not quite happy with is this background is a little bit too dark. Now, it's very hard to match a photograph perfectly with the HDR image because to do that you would need to take it at exactly the same time. Now there are some photographs that match the HDRs and they're available on our website shadelight.com in the resources section and there are some photographs that match our presets here. But what you can do and you can control the brightness of the HDR using the dark slider but to get the effect you want, you can then control the background brightness as well separately. So if I choose a background brightness of two, the, all this has done, it hasn't touched my model. This has just brightened the image, the background image. And now I can get to match my background image exactly the same as my model. So this now looks like my model was taken at about the same time and the same brightness in this particular environment. So if I just look at this full screen now, we zoom in 100%, we can see as this is progressively rendering, we're matching closely. We could, we could fine tune that a little bit, the green of the grass there, or we could give it a bit more color. But other than that, our shadows under the trees here, they're very similar to the shadows on the house. So we've matched the light that we've got on our background image to our model. And we can start to see in the windows here, we're getting reflections of the trees and the environment there. And these are from that 360 degree environment. So we can see it's really easy to set up that effect and also using the interactivity to create that light and get that matched as you want it. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna have a look at an interior scene. So I've set up here my, uh, my scene tab and I'm going to go to my interior. Now I've got shadows turned on um, in, inside the room here. And um, what we can see is just a little bit of light coming in through the window. Now this is what I would actually expect to see from this render. The reason for this is in real life, the brightness of the sunlight outside is extremely bright and the light photons are bouncing around and, and there's many, many millions and millions of these light photons in real life. And, um, you know, ultimately it doesn't need computer power to work out. So we've got less of these photons coming from our HDR. And um, obviously we would use a lot of memory if we wanted to create enough to create that real world environment. And it would be physically impossible from that photograph. 